Welcome to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, where our goal is to connect listeners to the great outdoors with hosts Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandale. I'm host Ben Brandale, owner of Meant to Be Outdoors, instructor of outdoor skills, and passionate about personal growth. I'm host Brian Hoffmeyer, wildlife biologist and avid outdoorsman. Welcome to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast. It's Myth Monday. I'm your host, Brian Hoffmeyer, here with my co-host, Ben Brandell. And today we are talking about the national mammal of the United States. Ben, do you know what the national mammal of the United States is? I just learned something new today. It is the bison. The bison. And that, yeah. that is actually something fairly new. In 2016, President Barack Obama signed the national bison legacy act so obviously this is myth monday so what is the myth what what is the myth surrounding bison you know this is one that you and i actually taught a lot um when we used to work at Warner's wildlife in Douglas kenyon it was one that um yeah we we had to actually share to a lot of people because as you just stated the national mammal is the bison the bison however when we look throughout all of north america but especially the united states we hear the word buffalo Buffalo, all the time. It is not the National Buffalo Legacy Act. So thankfully, Congress and President Barack Obama got it right. I'm glad. They got it right. Yes. But people all the time want to talk about the bison as a buffalo. People call it a buffalo. Buffalo Wild Wings, what is their logo? What is their? What is a picture? Well, that picture is a bison. With wings. With wings. A bison with wings, but they're called Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm-hmm. It just isn't right. There's a, a well-known golf course here locally called... Buffalo Ridge. Their logo is a bison. All the statues and decorations around the property are bison. Here's one of my favorites, too. Okay. You got another one. Home on the Range. Yeah, I know that song. Everybody knows that song from their childhood, right? Uh, Right. The very first line says, Oh, okay, I want everybody out there to sing with me. Ready? Here we go. Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam. So he must be talking about Africa or Africa. something, right? Because yeah. we don't have That's buffalo. That's where he's wanting to live. That song is about the American West, but he's wrong because we don't have buffalo here. We don't, correct. So let let me tell you real quick what a buffalo is and what a bison is. Um, really, it comes down to the three H's, and I want you guys to remember this. If you ever, anyone ever asks you what is the difference between a bison and a buffalo, the three H's, their home, their hump, and their horns, Okay. So their home is where they live, obviously, right? A bison is native to North America and Europe. There is a European bison. And then a buffalo you have in Africa and then India and other parts of Asia like China. So they're very far apart geographically. They look different. So the next H is hump. Bison have a hump on their back. Buffalo do not. They use that hump for digging through snow, fighting it makes really reinforces that neck and shoulder area for them has a purpose the third h is horns bison have short little horns turned up towards the sky buffalo have big crescent shaped horns that really come off the center of their head drop down to their ears and really they're much longer than a bison they look totally different they are totally different animals now they are related they're both bovine just as cattle and a bison are related. So there's really kind of the same relation there. Do you know where the name actually, like how this confusion even start? Where did it come from? Yeah, I'm I'm guessing probably back when the Europeans came over. Yeah. So if that is true, then we're looking at this has been said wrong for over 500 years. For a long time. A long time. A long, long time. But here today on Meant to Be Outdoors, we're clarifying this, and I know we're not the first ones, but this is just one of those things that drives us crazy, guys. Um, I had the pleasure and the honor of actually, uh, I don't know if you call it a bison rancher. I took care of a herd of bison for for over a year. It was awesome. They're incredible, incredible animals. I learned so much about them. Do you know they can run 40 miles an hour and hardly ever get tired? They have huge tracheas. Their windpipes are huge, four to six inches in diameter. So they can take in so much air feeding those huge bodies with all that oxygen. High, high speed. They are faster than a buffalo. A bison is faster than a buffalo. They're actually on average a little, a few hundred pounds bigger. So a bull, which is a male bison, is going to be up to about 2,200 pounds, so over a ton. And then your average cow is going to be about half of that, your females, about 1,100 pounds. The babies come out 30 to 40 pounds. 
And they're called calves. A nickname for them? Red dogs. Red dog. They're born with that bright red fur. One uh-huh. time we did have a black one born, though. It was really cool. It was solid black. It didn't have that red fur. But uh, What is your favorite thing about the national mammal of the United States, the bison? Yeah, my favorite thing that I used to teach, because uh, you can put it in perspective, you take a full-size Folger coffee can, uh-huh. and you hold that up, that's how large their windpipe is, Yeah, which allows them to in theory, run continuously and never stop. So to testify to that, Mm -hmm. um, so I had to load this old, old bull up. Uh, We had to load him up in the trailer. So I got him in the pen, got him in the corral, had the run, the shoot, the trailer backed up to it. He was stubborn. He did not want to go in that. He did not want to go in that trailer. He knew better. Mm -hmm. And I've loaded tons of cattle. Um, They get tired pretty quick. You get mean enough, mad enough, you you win that battle. I chased this bison bull around that pen. Sometimes he chased me around that mm-hmm. pen for two and a half hours. Wow. He never got tired, ever. Finally, he went in that trailer, but the first time I thought he was, he went down the alleyway like he was going to go into that trailer, and I thought, thank goodness, finally, he turned right before he went in that thing, and he smashed the corner of that trailer smashed my latch for the gate completely flat <laughs> turned picked up the gates that i made the uh the run the corral mm-hmm. out of yeah flipped it and was back in the in the pen i was like i'm never going to defeat this sucker like i he just would not get tired he wouldn't give up so now i had to take time to go fix the latch on my trailer cuz he just completely flattened it didn't even phase him if you or i hit that thing as hard as he did it would probably kill us right uh, ju- they're just the strength, the speed is amazing, and all that is awesome. But my favorite thing about them, is the way they taste. Mm-hmm. That is true. They man. are good. You're right. So if you've never had bison meat, uh, it is a red meat. But what, why I think it is superior to beef is because of how lean it is. It is lean, is healthier for you. If I had to compare it, I would say if you took venison, so deer meat. And beef and put them together somewhere in the that middle there yeah you got bison is. meat i agree um the one the one downside to that is, is if you are a person that likes really well done meat if you don't like any pink or any red in it at all bison meat's probably not for you because you, it'll be you dry yeah it'll get dried out so you do need to for me that's fine because i like that rare to that yeah. mid rare well so even it's, medium it's great i, I yeah. mean we're talking about bison burger here so yeah. actual bison big burger mm. but yeah on the medium My side mouth is drooling and we're recording this a little bit past lunchtime while lunch is actually cooking so that's right <laughs> i'm really drooling right now right. I, I wish it was a bison burger we're gonna have but unfortunately it's not so just for clarity if you are in the united states and you're going out to Yellowstone, mm-hmm. you are going to see what, Ben? Bison. A bison. That's right. Um, the, and just kind of the historical context of the bison here, we used to have 60 million, 60 million, six zero, of them roaming the United States. And now we have 500,000. That's all we have left. And even uh, on an even sadder note, only 5,000 of those 500,000 are considered to have wild DNA. Yep. So most of them have our cattle domesticated cattle DNA mixed in with them. So less than 5,000 would have the similar DNA to what was on the plains um, when the settlers first came over here. Um, and that's a, over a 99.9% population reduction. And, that, and that's just a, that's kind of a sad fact. Um, but, but they're incredible animals and we still have them. Most of them are going to be on farms and ranches. Uh, you know what you're not going to find on farms and ranches? What's that? Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo, guys. I want you to remember, buffalo are native to Africa and Asia. They have no humps on their backs. They don't live here in the United States. They have big, long horns that are much different than a bison. So I hope next time that you call a bison, you call it a bison. Yeah, call a bison. It's not a buffalo. And and on that note, um, if you want a little more research, the conservation story of bison is it's really incredible. Um, you know, it, it, it goes from sad to even to today where, where the numbers are coming back. But definitely check out the National Park Service. Um, you know, they have some great information on there about um, the history of and um, kind of where we're at today. Yeah, that's where we got a, a lot of what we're talking about. So to summarize, bison live in, the, in North America 
in Europe, there are there is a European bison. We have two species here uh, in North America. We have the woods bison that lives in Canada and Alaska, and then we have uh, the American bison or the plains bison that is native to the the prairies mm. of, of America. They used to cover from New York to California and Canada to Mexico. Now you're just going to find them on farms and in Yellowstone. About half a million of them that we have left. Got to go to Africa or Asia to find a buffalo. I guess you could find one in a zoo here in the United States, mm-hmm. but you're not going to find one out anywhere else. So hopefully next time you go to Buffalo Wild Wings, you correct them. No, that's not what we want you to do. As long as you have an understanding that the bison here in the United States is not a buffalo, we just ask that you call it the right thing next time. So we thank you for listening to this episode of Myth Mondays on the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast. Between now and next Monday, we do hope that you find some time to get outdoors. Thank you for listening to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, hosted by Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandell. Please help us by subscribing. Also, follow along on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook.